Are you tired of your scuba diving video footage looking flat and uninspiring like this? Wish you could have footage that looked like this instead? In this video, I'll share with you three easy methods you can use to add life to your underwater video footage instantly, regardless of the camera and video editor that you use. Let's get into it. I'm Thomas Hughes, a professional scuba instructor, and on this channel, you'll see videos on scuba education, equipment, experiences, and environmental awareness. We all want to take better underwater footage. To quickly cover my bases, I use a GoPro for my footage currently. However, these tips apply to any underwater video. It doesn't matter if it was taken with a cell phone, DSLR and housing, DJI Osmo, another action camera, or really any camera. I'll be using Premiere Pro for tips two and three, but again, the same applies to almost any other popular video editor, such as Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, etc. Finally, I put chapters down below, so if you want to skip back to a specific tip or go forward to the next tip, you can do that as well. At the end of the video, I'll show a comparison of the original footage versus each of the three methods in this video, and I'll share the most critical step you need to ensure you get the best footage possible. Now, let's get into my first tip, and I'm telling you now, you will be amazed at how quick and easy this really is. What if I told you that you can go from this to this in seconds with a free app. The Dive Plus app is free and available on both Android and iOS. You literally just open the app, go to the Labs tab, then tap either underwater photo or underwater video. Finally, tap correct colors and watch the magic happen. Boom, look at that, we have beautiful footage. Now, this may look a little intense and need to be turned down or even up with this slider, but the AI here is really good and it tries to make the photo or video as good as possible after just one tap. Of course, things like a red filter, proper white balance, lighting, etc. are all still important, and I have some links down below for suggestions that I have. But even with really bad footage, this still makes a huge improvement. The free version allows you to edit eight photos and two videos per day. But if you pay for the VIP version, you can do as many photos and videos you want, and even batch correct all your photos at once. It's around $4 a month or $23 for a year for VIP. This video isn't sponsored by Dive Plus or anyone else for that matter, but I do use this product every time I go on a trip to quickly edit photos and videos so I can easily share them during the trip with my dive buddies. Now, Dive Plus is great for quick edits and automatically correcting footage, but honestly, it's not always the best route to take. Color Correcting your footage in an actual video editor like Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or in this case Premiere Pro is going to give you a much better result, provided you follow the critical step that I outline at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. Now, editing your footage in a video editor can also take a lot longer to do, and while it may produce the absolute best version of the video, we may not all have that much time. If you want to see how I manually correct footage, stay tuned for tip three. But for now, in order to hack the color correcting process and truly save time, we can use something called a LUT or a lookup table. LUTs are something most editing software can use, and basically what they do is provide a way for the software to know what a color should truly look like. To keep things simple, you probably know that as you dive deeper underwater, light's absorbed and begin to lose various colors, starting with red, then yellow, orange, etc. A LUT will help restore some of that color for you by telling your editing software that a certain shade of, let's say, orange is actually supposed to be more yellow or red, pink, etc. The good news is, you don't really have to know any of this because the LUT does the work for you and Matthias Lebo, a popular YouTuber and award-winning professional underwater videographer who's done work for National Geographic as well as a number of huge brands, he released his personal GoPro LUTs for all of us to use. These LUTs work in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro and are so simple to use. Once you download them, you get a PDF telling you how to use them with your editor and of course the LUTs themselves, but I'll walk you through the process of how to use them in Premiere Pro. Once you've opened your project in Premiere Pro, you can add your footage to the timeline sequence like normal. Then, in the Lumetri Color panel, you'll want to expand the Creative section. If you don't see Lumetri Color, you can go to Window, Lumetri Color, and it'll come up. Now, go to the Look dropdown in the Creative area area and you can select the LUT from here. The first time you do this, you'll need to browse to the files you downloaded and selected. But because I've done this already, I'll just select the LUT that I want. Now, similar to Dive Plus, you can slide this intensity slider to adjust the effect up and down. You can see just how easy it is to improve the footage. And of course, you can still make additional adjustments if you need to, but these LUTs alone are great. I told Matthias that I'd be making a video about editing underwater footage, and he offered to give a discount for anyone that wants to purchase the LUTs from him. Just enter the code CircleHScuba at checkout, and you'll 
you'll save 10%. And the best part is you'll save 10% off anything in his shop, including his best-selling underwater videographer course. Now, like any other automation technique, this will do a great job at a base level, but additional tweaking can lead to better results, though it does take longer overall to edit your footage. This is where my final tip comes into play. Let me introduce to you the power of color correcting with scopes, and specifically by showing you the Lumetri scopes in Premiere Pro. Now, first, I'll admit these can look a bit intimidating, though they really are super cool, and anyone that sees your screen while you're editing will think you're a total wizard, so you get instant cool points too, and that's just a bonus tip. At a high level, Lumetri scopes allow you to see things like the histogram, RGB parade, and vector scope for your footage, which are all ways to see the color levels, luma or light levels, and contrast within your image. I'm going to use Premiere Pro with the Lumetri scopes and Lumetri color panels, but most video editors have very similar tools to do this kind of color correction, so this tip still applies. In Premiere Pro, change to the color workspace. If you don't see the Lumetri scopes panel, go to Window, Lumetri scopes to bring it up. Then right click in the panel and make sure you have the vector scope YUV, Parade RGB, and Waveform Luma enabled. Then, under Parade Type, make sure it's set to RGB. Finally, under Waveform Type, make sure it's set to Luma. Now, let's scrub through the timeline to find a good frame that represents the footage we want to edit for a reference shot. The Vectorscope YUV will show us the amount of each color in the video frame, represented by red, green, and blue, which in turn make up every color in the visible spectrum. The halfway point between these colors are cyan, magenta, and yellow, so we can use this data to correct our footage and make sure our colors are represented properly. Finally, the spread from the center of the scope tells us how much saturation the color has. Our goal is to use these sliders in the Lumetri color panel to adjust the video frame, and in turn, use the scope to ensure that we're remaining accurate with our colors. Most underwater footage will have a lot of blue and green, so we'll want to add orange and magenta to balance this out because it's the opposite of those colors. If we don't have that much spread, we can add vibrancy by increasing the saturation and find a good balance and look for us. Next, the RGB parade will show us the level of red, green, and blue within the video footage as well, where the left side of the column is the left side of the video and the right side is the right part of the video. At the top is the brightest part of the footage, or the whites, and the bottom is the darkest parts of the blacks. We use this to help raise the reds in our footage while making sure we aren't maxing out the red at the top, or any other color for that matter, as we'll lose color data if we push it too far. We can adjust the color curves directly in this panel to increase and decrease the red, green, and blue channels directly where the left side is the blacks and the right side is the whites. Finally, we can look at the Luma waveform to determine the amount of light balance in the image. We use this to help ensure we're not over or underexposing any parts of our video and can do things like increasing and decreasing the whites, blacks, shadows, highlights, exposure, and brightness sliders. As you can see, this can be much more time consuming, but with a little bit of effort and the power of editing, we can get to this, which is just beautiful in my opinion. So here we are with our three edited and color corrected clips, but remember there's one critical step you cannot forget that I'll cover in just a moment. Here's the original version, the Dive Plus version, the Matthias Lebo version, and the manually color corrected footage for comparison. In my opinion, the manual correction is the best, but takes so much more time that it really might not be worth the effort. Personally, I use Dive Plus for my footage for quick edits, and then for my videos here on YouTube, I'll take the original footage, use a LUT from Matthias, and then manually tweak from there as needed to find a good balance between time and quality. If you want to edit footage using the workflow I do, remember you can pick up Matthias' LUTs and anything else in his store for 10% off using the promo code CIRCLEHSCUBA below. Editing your footage will truly transform your underwater video, but like I said, there's a critical step you need to take to make all of this work. It is imperative that you set up your GoPro settings and use the right filters to capture the best footage possible so your video editor can actually improve it. And that's exactly what I talk about in these videos. Click or tap the screen now to watch those, then come back to this video when you're ready to edit again. Finally, I have a question for you. If you made it this far in the video, leave a comment telling me if you'd like more videos about filming underwater, editing footage, and if not, what kind of videos would you like to see? With that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.